Good morning and welcome back to the Winning Celtic Fans View this Thursday morning. Yes, it is Thursday morning. We're one day closer to the start of the Euros and back to seeing some football. Back to seeing some football, even though it's international football, which is it's okay, but it's not it's not it's football, isn't it? It's back to seeing some football. Anyway, there's a lot of Celtic news to get through this morning. Um going from the standing sections at Celtic Park to uh, the Liverpool are talking about possibility of Celtic transfer for a player and the implications of Liverpool buying another player for Celtic. Uh, there's an exclusive about, well, it's not exclusive, but there's breaking news about the one and only Benji Segrist. Big Benji Segrist news and some others this morning. But first of all, let's talk about the standing sections at Celtic Park. As we're all aware, the standing section at Celtic Park is in the North Curve. The North Curve, which holds the Green Brigade. And the North Curve Celtic uh, group, which is sort of a cover group for the, the, the wider section. Uh, but yes, it has been the Green Brigade section for many, many a years, whether people love it or hate it. It seems to split the, the Celtic fan base. Some people like the, the ultras and some people don't. Celtic have put in an application to extend a section of Celtic Park for a, a further 445 seats in the safe standing rail seat area of the southwest corner. Yes, where the boys are. So Celtic are now going to have two different standing sections if they get away with this. Um, uh, that obviously, the history behind the, the Green Brigade and the boys obviously splitting up was uh, back in the day when they were called the SMV. And they've done the graffiti stuff and they basically let off flares in the ground when they weren't meant to. And they ended up falling out with the Green Brigade. Yes, they fell out with the Green Brigade and that's why they have their, their own little sections. And they call themselves the boys now. Uh, but they are looking to get their own standing section within inside Celtic Park. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about two different standing areas within Celtic Park? Um, wouldn't it be better just putting them both together? And they stand together at away games and at Hamden, etc. Um, you'd think that Celtic would just go, right, let's just... But then it does add to the atmosphere at both ends of the stadium. Because let's face it, uh, the Celtic end can be pretty quiet during games. It can be pretty quiet. And it, it, it makes sure that there is singing from both corners of the ground. Tell me your thoughts about, obviously, you've got the, the North Curve. Uh, the North Curve. And... Then you're going to have another standing section. How do you feel about that? Uh, they, they bring lots of noise and lots of atmosphere to the games. I love it, um, personally. I think that the standing shit, I mean, should be going for the Celtic end, like what the Green Brigade and the boys wanted a few years back. And it was tested out during a Scottish football women's game. Would you like to see the Celtic end more than two standing sections? Maybe this is a way of them sort of slowly implicating into the one area but then again there's that many people that sit and you've obviously got uh, some corporate in the celtic and also that they, they wouldn't move the corporate so i think it's a it's a it's the lesser of two evils as far as celtic concerned um and it, it does get a uh, a lot of people around the ground singing. So anyway the celtic want to replace existing seats with a safe standing rail seating area in the southwest corner to a total number of seats of 455 and the application has been lodged with Glasgow City Council. So yeah, that is uh, that's big news with regards to the boys. Um, it's interesting. It is interesting. I might actually just message somebody just now just to see what it is all about. Now there's news coming out of Liverpool this morning with that is uh, regarding Celtic and and would affect Celtic in one way or another. Is the fact that the Liverpool Echo. Are talking about Liverpool have a double Jeremy Fringpon transfer advantage, it says, with Celtic clause explained. Reports from Germany have supported have suggested that Liverpool are considering a move for Bayer Leverkusen cousin star Jeremy Fringpon. And we all know that Celtic do have that clause. A move for Fringpon could benefit Liverpool in more ways than one. If Arnie Slot's side can pull off this summer deal, it's been said. I said they look to take uh, they look to try and take advantage of a 35 million release clause, which ends soon. So it looks like that release clause ends at the end of this summer. Hence the reason that clubs are going to try and take advantage of it before his price tag goes up even more. 
But Fring Prawn played a, 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 a fantastic role by a Leverkusen, going undefeated to win the Bundesliga for the first time in their history. Finishing the season a remarkable 17 points, clear of their second place Stuttgart and 18 clear of Bayern Munich. And uh, it goes on to say that uh, it seems that the 23 year olds would be open to an Anfield switch, having made his, his feelings about the transfer when speaking to Ziggo Sport earlier this year. He said Liverpool are a great club with a great history. Uh, then goes on to say about the Celtic connection. He says, starting out his career at Manchester City, Fringpong was sold to Celtic in 2019 after failing to make a first team appearance under Whip Guardiola. After two seasons in Scotland, the Amsterdam-born star took advantage of a new challenge in, generally, in Germany. Another transfer is on the cards this summer. Celtic are set to benefit in the same way City did back in 2021. And after negotiating a 30% sell-on clause when selling to the Scottish Giants, it is understood that Celtic these days managed by a former Liverpool manager, Brendan Rodgers, due to receive a 30% profit made on the Netherlands International if Leverkusen cash in on their prize asset. So what does it mean for Liverpool? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Such a fee could be problematic um, for Celtic. Celtic could believe to be still looking at Kellyer, who's expected to move over the coming weeks as he searches for a number one role elsewhere. Liverpool rejected a 15 million offer in January for the player. They value him at more than that. Such a fee could be problematic for Celtic, whose club record spend stands at 9 million. Although they would be in line to earn approximately 7 million if the Fringpong release clause is triggered during the transfer window. This capital could subsequently be used towards an ambitious swoop for Kelly, who is resigned to the fact that he's stuck behind Alice. Alison Becker uh, and the goalkeeping pecking order. Celtic are on the lookout for a new goalkeeper and we all know that Celtic are in talks with the Newcastle goalkeeper also at this time um, but it looks like they will be needing another keeper because there's big Benji Segrist news coming in this video also. Big Benji Segrist news. So um, anyway, it's all up in there. It's all it's all going in the right direction. There obviously there's a lot of balls getting juggled about at the moment by Celtic and they're um, they're trying to see which one they could land. Uh, Newcastle, the Newcastle one, uh, Eddie Howe is willing to uh, sanction a transfer for the Newcastle goalkeeper, Martin Dubrick. And um, I'm just getting a message that something needs to be done, overcrowded, and the seats are fucked. So that's, we just had a message from one of the boys' lads. And let me just get WhatsApp back up. Um, and he has said, it said it's not even in the right area that they've proposed, so it'll get rejected. Uh, uh, it's in the boys' section, that's the seat next to it. Basically, the restricted view last night uh, from the main stand. If something does need to be done because it is heavy, overcrowded in that section, and the seats are fucked, as he says. Anyway, that's a, that's an update from the, one of the boys, lads, and it's good to get the inf inside information on that whilst we're doing the video. Anyway. Back to the Celtic goalkeeping situation. Celtic are set for a busy summer as a, re as a sorry, it's not a rebuild, but it's an extending of the current first team squad. After the double success of last season, Brendan Rodgers, who beat Phil Clement and also saw off the one and only Michael Beale last season, looking to push ahead on all fronts next season, going into the Champions League and to try and get another treble. Yes, Brendan Rodgers and the lads want to try and get another treble in Celtic colours. Anyway, Celtic have had talks with Benfica over Paulo Bernardo and make that deal permanent. They're also making serious moves for a new number one goalkeeper. Joe Hart obviously retired, we all know that, but Newcastle... Um, have a goalkeeper that uh, Celtic are trying to get hold of uh, and a cut price dual heart. Hmm. He is a 35 year old goalkeeper. We spoke about it yesterday and it does seem there is a bit of meat on the bone with this one, this story still, but um, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm, at the end of the day, we can all speculate about uh, Celtic being in talks with goalkeepers. For me, uh, until it's done and dusted, you know, we're just adding to the speculation. And once it's done and dusted, we'll know exactly what the situation is. But there is still big news coming about Benji Segrist. There is big news about Benji Segrist. And O uh, did report it yesterday, the fact that O is looking to get out of Scotland. 
um, which is, I, I think, we do not be better trying to fight for his position or oh, all oh, wants out. Um, he's not a, he's not the player Adam either is, and but it said that uh, he's actually come out and well supposedly um, he wants to actually leave Celtic now. Um, Always in the squad for just three of the living, remaining 11 Scottish Premiership games. And he saw just 10 minutes of action and four months dropping out of the squad. Um, obviously, because Adam Eder was there. Hmm. Over his Celtic career so far, um, over the couple, two seasons that he's been at Celtic, he has had 47 appearances. He's had six starts. He's only started six times. He's had 12 goals and 48. 47 appearances, he's had no assists, and he's had it's 109 minutes per goal. So it's not the best of the turn for a, a striker, but reports in Belgium saying that uh, Genk are looking to take him, and he is top of their wish list. They want the deal done sooner rather than later. They don't want to hang about for the Celtic. They don't want Celtic hanging about. They want the deal done as quickly as possible. It, is being said now the big Benji Segrist news of the day. Yes, the goalkeeper that is sitting on the bench. No, he doesn't even sit on the bench most weeks, does he? He doesn't sit on the bench at all. He's just there. He's just there getting a fantastic, fantastic wage. Anyway, this big news came out about Benji and Brittany. Brittany, bitch. Uh, Brittany and Bre <laughs> Benji, Benji and Brittany. Uh, are getting the, are engaged. Yes, they're engaged to be married. That is the big Celtic news when it comes to it. Uh, the, the Bachelor star. Um, uh, who cares? And it was interesting that they actually met via... Uh, where's, the, where's the other story? Um, it says, After watching the shows, many fans were wondering about her personal life away from the jungle. Brittany, 36, is engaged to Benjamin Segrist, 32, a Swiss professional football player. The couple announced their engagement news. They were engaged via Instagram, as, as people do in this day and age. You know, it's just like... Yeah, anyway. Uh, it's, in any lifetime, it's a yes, she wrote. Just two people loving each other for the rest of our lives. Uh, Brittany and Ben have been together since 2022. 20, they met through a celebrity dating app called Rhea. What happened to plenty of fish and Tinder? <laughs> Are they even still on the go? <laughs> uh, a professional celebrity dating app. I bet it was Tinder they met on. There was plenty of fish or something. Something like that. Anyway, Benji Segrist, who was at an Australia, uh, Australian playing against Sydney Football Club at the time, the couple have had a long distance relationship. And Ben is based, Ben, hi Ben, <laughs> is based in Scotland uh, for work. I like how they say that. He's based in Scotland for work. He's a goalkeeper and plays for the Celtic, the Celtic Football Club in the Scottish Premier League. Oh, it's mad. Brittany has frequently shared her details on the hardships and to come with a long distance relationship, but has always said it's worth it. Um, so that this is probably one of the reasons why Benji Segrist does want out of Celtic. Um, he wants to get closer to his missus. And, and let's face it, he's, he's not playing football at Celtic. So um, let him go and let him enjoy his life of luxury with his, his older woman. Yes, his older woman. <laughs> I can't even pull jokes about that one. Uh, <laughs> that's too early in the morning for that. Anyway, but is always to be wanting about wanting children and has uh, found it difficult to fall pregnant, she says, speaking on our podcasts. Anyway, that's the big news of Benji Segrist. She, uh, congratulations to Benji. Uh, we, shouldn't have, we should have missed a bit that. Uh, uh, big congratulations to the big man. Um, and uh, I wonder what Celtic players will get invited over for the wedding and picture of, of her on the beach with a nice sparkling diamond ring. Uh, Benji with his turkey teeth, nice and whitened, and uh, with his white shirt, uh, not looking like a football Well, I don't know, young football players these days. It's, it's, it's all the thing, isn't it? It's all the rage. It's all the rage. Anyway, on that note, it's all about the Euros. Tomorrow evening, Scotland takes centre stage. As the Doug just taking centre stage on this video, barking at somebody walking past the house, probably. Anyway. And there's the hand of God telling her to shut up. <laughs> Fucking brilliant.
<laughs> She's never arguing with the dog. Fucking love it. Anyway, uh, it's all about Euros. It's all about Scotland. Uh, make sure that you uh, join us for some videos tomorrow. Uh, it should be a laugh. Anyway, on that note, I don't know when I'm going to go and watch it. I need to try and find a pub that's got a few Scotland fans in it. Anyway, on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world. Let's roll up to the-